So, uh, any excuse to talk about my favorite thing, which is how computers really work. Yesterday, we learned how fast they are. Today, I'm going to talk about your brackets Intel CPU, um, although other CPUs do similar tricks. First thing that you probably didn't know your computer did for you is it guesses how your data is going to be accessed. This is a loop here, which is just adding up a whole bunch of numbers in an array. And as you know, computers have caches, and every 64 odd bytes, you're going to probably miss the cache and the, you're going to be delayed waiting for the cache to load in the next 64 bytes. Your computer notices this and it spots the pattern of misses and it starts getting ahead of you and starts prefetching things even before you've asked for them. So it reads the flow of your program and understands which way you're reading memory, which is pretty clever, except when it gets it wrong. Second thing it does is it turns CISC into RISC. We all remember the CISC RISC wars back in the, the days and sort of ARM is RISC and x86 is CISC. Well, your x86 processor is really a RISC processor. It's just hiding it from you. The CISC nature of the instructions that you see, such as these complicated things, so obviously MOV EAX, comma 1, not very complicated, but add RDAI plus 16, comma 1 is a whole bunch of operations, and really they can be broken down into four things, and that's exactly what's happening inside your CPU. It's turning those big instructions into tiny little instructions, and then it schedules them internally in its own unique way, which takes me to the third point. It reschedules your code. So just like your operating system can interleave and rerun um, multiple threads at the same time, provided they're not accessing the same data uh, with, with like mutexes and stuff, this can happen inside your CPU. So these two iterations of the loop can, in fact, run concurrently if you have adders and subtractors and multipliers available, which is awesome, except there are data dependencies between these, so you can't do that. Luckily, your compiler, sorry, no, your CPU acts like a compiler and turns the execution of those little instructions it's done into static single assignment form effectively. This is called register renaming. What it really does is it says, well, I know you've only got one RDI and one EAX register, um, but you completely obliterate it on the second iteration over here. So why don't I just make up a new version of it? I've got loads of space in my die. I can have hundreds of registers, but you can only call one of them EAX. But I can remap that dynamically on the fly by analyzing the flow. And so it turns it into something which you can't read because it's green on a bad background. Whoops. Um, that these EAX0 is like this made up instruction, sorry, made up register. Um, and now um, the second iteration can actually run at the same time as the first iteration. So even though they're using the same registers, the CPU can rename them, that is, it like re re gives them new variable names effectively and lets them run concurrently. Oh my gosh. Um, and then this thing you probably know a little bit about, because um, certainly I bang on about it, um, it can predict the future. One of the cool things about CPUs these days is that they're super quick, as we said, but in order to get that speed, they have to be able to get lots of things that it knows to do in, in a, like a long sequence ahead of time. So although you might see all of these um, instructions I just put up on the screen in terms of like a program, what the CPU actually sees, oh, hang on, sorry, I forgot my slides. Um, this is a loop. So here we can see that at the bottom of the loop, it's going to go back up to the top, probably, probably. Um, what your CPU's pipeline is actually seeing is a predicted flow of those instructions. And so the various instructions come through in this sequence. It's already kind of pulled the loop out of the, um, the pipeline, and it's just giving you one after another. Here's a bunch of instructions in the order I think you're going to hit them. And the, this only works if it can guess whether the loops uh, are taken, the branches are taken or not. But it is amazingly good at them. And in fact, someone has just recently reverse engineered how the x86 one works, and it's absolutely bonkers. So, um, in summary, oh my golly, in summary, <laughs> it can prefetch data by looking at the misses and going, hey, there seems to be a pattern to these. I bet you I should, it would be good if I got ahead of you. Um, it can turns, uh, turns all of the instructions into a microcode, which is like risk-like instructions. It can reorder them arbitrarily if it can work out that there are no dependencies between instructions. And in order to make that reordering even more effective, it can actually rewrite them to use different hardware registers internally. And it can um, predict the flow of your program to unlock even more parallelism. And with that, I'm going to hand you back 20 seconds. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.